horror shows are always loads of entertainment because you can't help but walk away out of them bursting with optimism for the future. It's the same reason why futuristic genres do so well. It's a glimpse of not just what can be, but what will be. It's very, very exciting. It's a better world, well, for the most part. We as Filipinos should take away the exact same thing the rest of the world does because, well, we are, infancy maybe, at the very beginning of the age of electrification. There is nowhere else but up because car manufacturers have already pledged to go full electric within what, the next 5, 10, 15 years, which should trickle down to the Philippines in the not so distant future. Now, one of the best venues to sneak a peek at this is the Consumer Electric Show, which is held without fail every year in Vegas. Well, save for the last year when it was an all digital affair for obvious reasons. Not everybody knows about the CES, but I'm pretty sure that everybody knows about some of the great products that were launched at CES. Like, well, like there's VCRs, camcorders, the Commodore 64, DVDs, HD TVs, the Xbox, 3D porn, the Insta360. Wait, what? 3D what? Ah, solid! Wow, ow. I didn't write, okay, I did write that, but I didn't write that. That must have been Jack. He must have snuck it in through the back door or something. The CES is also responsible for showcasing some of the latest technology available in cars as well. In recent years, the show drew its curtains back to reveal some pretty awesome advances like the Sony Vision S, the Mercedes-Benz Vision AVTR, Hyundai's PAV, Audi AIME or IME, and startups like Byton. And this year was no different. There was a lot of automotive tech going around that captured the imagination and hearts of many. Now what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas, so here's a quick rundown of what happened in the first week of 2022 at Sin City. Chadang! The Mercedes EQXX, an electric coupe capable of almost a thousand kilometers on a single charge. That's like Manila to Davao. 200 kilometers longer than the mighty Tesla Model S. It's got a ridiculous 47.5 inch in-car 8K display, recycled and plant-based materials used for the interior, like leather made from cactus, if you can believe it, and lightweight sound installation made from banana skins and chicken bones. Basically banana ketchup and fried chicken. This thing's Pinoy. Powered by a single electric motor, kicking out 204 horses with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's a bit less than the pack found in the EQS, but it's half the size and 30% lighter thanks to the help of engineers from its Formula One team. It's the most aerodynamic electric vehicle which has a drag coefficient of just 0.18, which is about 0.02 less than the super slippery Mercedes EQS and Tesla Model S Plaid. Now, while the EQXX won't enter into production, it will inspire future models. And it's a completely realistic way forward for Mercedes-Benz and electric vehicle technology. What's most important about this is that the technology will come into all electric Mercedes vehicles by 2024. BMW has released their second electric vehicle underneath the umbrella of the most powerful letter, M. Their iX M60 will offer their latest curved iDrive display powered by BMW Operating System 8, as well as augmented reality video, among other features. The calipers painted in blue, featuring the M logo, and optional titanium bronze design 22-inch wheels look killer. And get this, it uses e-ink on the outside so it can change color. Man, either Michael Jackson would be so proud or the LTO is gonna have a field day with this. BMW says the motors operate on the principle of a current energized synchronized machine where, and I quote, the excitation of the rotor is triggered by the precisely metered supply of electrical energy, which is really just fancy talk for this gonna go fast. Slated to come out by mid-2022, the iX M60 will feature two electric motors packing 610 horses and an unbelievable 1,100 Nm of torque, 0 to 100 km per hour in well under 4 seconds and will get up to 450 km of range on a single charge, which if plugged into a DC fast charger, the M60 will only take 35 minutes to get from 10 to 80% charged. Whatever money you save on fuel though, you'll put into obtaining the iX M60, which starts at 106,095 US dollars. Not for the faint of heart. Uncle Sam gets into the action and how? With a Chrysler Airflow concept, an electric SUV perfectly in line with the company's vision of going fully electric by 2028. 
if it were to go into production, it would compete with the likes of the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It's got more screens than Walmart on a Black Friday and the ground clearance of Ramon from Cars. I mean, seriously, look at this thing. The Airflow features an all-wheel drive thanks to two 150 kilowatt motors, one on each axle. The cool thing is that the drive tame can be adjusted to accommodate more powerful motors in the future. While there weren't many details on the battery size or energy capacity, they did estimate a range of 560 to 640 kilometers per charge. Now, I don't mean to, well, indigo spheroid anybody out there, but Chrysler did confirm that it won't go into production, but rather serve as a preview of what's to come. Chrysler CEO insists, and I quote, it showcases our leading edge electrified drive system technology that delivers up to 400 miles of range and fast charging functionality. It includes advanced safety technologies that are true to Chrysler's safety heritage and leadership, and also includes intuitive AI and connected vehicle technology, end quote. Now from Betamax and not that, you know, to the Walkman, to Playstations, and most recently the Vision S, Sony pumps out the next generation Vision, the S02, an SUV. Okay, so the name isn't spectacular. The car looks pretty good though. Powered with 536 horses, it's got imagers and sensors to aid the driver and help it run autonomously, and voice commands as expected, including time of flight sensors for driver authentication and navigation. 5G should keep the car connected all the time, unless you're entering BGC from C5, keeping the software updated and enabling remote operations. The other big news is that Sony has announced that they're putting up a company for the sole purpose of making cars called Sony Mobility. If it can do better than what Betamax did against the VHS, then this should be pretty impressive. So, I drive a Sony Vaio. Yeah, the name might need some work though. Numerous times in history, the argument of who was better between two inventors, scientists, visionaries, has graced so many classrooms, lecture halls, laboratories, and even the silver screen, debating on which name should stand out. Tesla or Edison. Now, while the former has a massive market presence, the latter, it seems, is coming out swinging. A hell of a lot better looking than the Cybertruck is the EF1T by Edison Future. The top of the line will feature a tri-motor with a numbing 816 horsepower and a towing capacity of almost five tons, all in a package that's capable of over 700 kilometers in one charge. What's more, it's got solar panels on the roof for what could be juice for the motor or the systems inside, and on the retracting bed, a cover which is in the shape of an armadillo shell. It's so cool. It's still a prototype, but so was the Tesla S before it went into production a year later. So we could be at the infancy of what could be a full-on battle. Hey, it could happen. This one isn't exactly for our roads, but I'm excited at the prospect of seeing these in our country to help some of the hardest working people out there, our farmers. One of the more popular tilling tractor brands in the United States is good old John Deere. And they revealed just recently their first ever fully autonomous tractor capable of being operated and monitored with your mobile phone, dramatically reducing the farmer fatigue under blazing conditions and or time constraints based on weather patterns and possibly solving labor problems, think about it. However, what John Deere's brand of autonomous driving proved is that even without all the hype around 5G, nothing more than satellite connectivity is really needed to make a vehicle self-driving. It's got six pairs of stereo cameras coupled with GPS at the command of the farmer. Once the tractor's parameters are set, they can walk away and attend to, you know, other important things like making moonshine. An app via data provides live video, images, information. You can even change the tractor's speed or direction like a big old 40,000 pound remote control. Fun for the entire family. All at the same time, the tractor also gathers data about the health of the crops in the field and other important metrics. What this tractor also represents is an open door for a host of other chores like planting and spraying, which John Deere speaks as if they want to tackle that very, very soon. Actually, truth be told, I would love to see Clarkson have a go at this truck and see the amount of trouble he could get into. Probably like maim the guy that he works with. What's his name, Caleb? Yeah, that'll be hilarious. Before I let you go, there was one non-car related reveal at the 2022 CES that caught my eye for two very different reasons. 
LG display showcased a media chair concept. It's got a 55 inch OLED panel with a 1500R curve, which offers the perfect focal distance for optimal viewing experience, which can also rotate between portrait and landscape modes. And since it's attached to the chair's frame, the TV also stays in your sight line as you recline the entire chair. I mean, think about it. Tiny apartments can have man caves too. LG also hints that they are working with an unnamed Korean massage chair company to bring it to the market someday. Now the second reason, not so great. See, it's called the LG Display TV Throne. So it could be worse, like the urinal hot drink or the Mazda Titan dunk. I swear these are real products. Maybe they could spend a little money from the R&D budget on marketing. Just a thought. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. They could call it the Tilt. Hey, I got myself a t Hey, if LG uses that name, I want a, I want a chair for free. Call it the LG Tilt. Huh, that's catchy.